Hey everyone, today we're gonna talk about using tabs in Adalo. So Adalo doesn't actually have tabs. It's not a component, it's not something in the marketplace, but you can still make the functionality look like it's there by combining screens and different styles. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, a couple tips and tricks along the way, and we'll just jump in now. Okay, so I've got my app starter. Currently, all that we have is a quick database of users, so I can show you a couple of lists and, and work with something in our design. And I've also got a screen here that has an image and says hi and has a button to go to a profile. This is all just to demo what we can do to create the tabs. The first thing we need to do is design the tabs. So we're gonna go into this profile screen and just for a quick use case, we'll use like this social media profile where we've got followers and people we're following. And we wanna make a tab to toggle between both of those lists. So first, what do I wanna do? Let's add the list because we know we're going to toggle between two different lists here. I just wanna do a really quick one. So we'll change some of the styles make it a collection of users. We won't worry about the filtering just yet. We, we're just working on the design, so we just need this placeholder for now. And then let's do background without the shadow. Cool, okay, so we've got just a basic list in here. Next, what I wanna do is actually style the tabs. So these are the things that you click on that toggle between the two lists. So you can use pretty much whatever you want to use as tabs. You could use the button component. You could use text with a line under it. I think the important thing here is to make sure you have a good indication for the active tab versus the inactive tab or multiple tabs. So you could use a button and change the color or use text and have the line move around and change the color if you wanted to. What I'm gonna do is actually kind of create my own button just for a little more flexibility. So let's add a rectangle in and let's just shrink the size a little bit and let's give it the same rounding as our list. And then I'm going to add some text. So we'll go ahead and do that and make it the same width as this button that we're creating. And let's see here. I wanna give it a center alignment this new Nito font. And for the text, we're gonna need one that's for followers and then one that's for following. So when I have this in a good spot and I like the way it's designed, I'll just group it together and we'll call this tab one just so we can keep track of things here. And then I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt if you're on a PC and click and drag to create the other tab. Now these are kind of far apart. What you might want to do is you know, figure out which size you'd actually like before you make the duplicate. So I'm gonna trash that one and make a new duplicate. I think that looks a little better. Okay, cool. So next, the thing we want to do is style the active tab. So we know that when someone comes to a profile, they're going to be viewing one of two tabs. So which one do we want it to be? Typically, I like to start with the furthest to the left. I think that makes the most sense for a user experience. So if you want it to be followers, then you should have your followers tab on the, the farthest to the left. I'm gonna switch the text of the second one to make it the following list. And then let's give it some style to show that it's active. So first of all, what I wanna do is change the background color to this blue, and then let's change the text to white so it shows up here. Okay, cool. I think that actually looks pretty good. So. We have a clearly active tab here. And for this inactive one, it's just this kind of gray color. We could go in and style it differently if we wanted to. You've got, you know, all kinds of different options and shadowing and things like that. In fact, let's do this. Let's take off the background or you could leave it on. We'll just change it to white just in case. We'll make sure the background's there. And then you could give it a border. We can up it just a little bit and change the border color to blue. 
And you could even keep the text color as blue in this case too. And I like that style actually a little bit better. So this is the inactive tab pretty obviously and this is the active one. So yeah, I like that. I think that looks pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to filter down the list so that the data that's being shown for the tab matches the active tab. Right now it's just showing a list of all users. First of all, the filter we need is going to be logged in users followers, the way that I've got the database set up. And we could do sorting, maybe we could do like first name, A to Z, something like that. And I think everything else is all right. Oh, actually, I think let's use the first and last name for this title. There we go. And then for the subtitle, I actually don't need that. I'll just turn it off. And the left section, we'll use the current user's photo. I think that's good. So this is just showing the followers now. Next, what we need to do is duplicate this screen so we can create the following tab. So duplicating a screen is pretty easy. What you can do is click on the screen name to activate the screen and hold down Option or Alt if you're on a PC and click and drag just like you would with a component to copy it. And it will create a copy of the screen for you. What I might do here is rename this to following tab just so we can reference it pretty easily. And we want to change the styles and the filter to match this new tab. So for the collection list, we're going to change the filter to logged in users following. And then we're also going to swap the styles around to make it look like the tab switches. So we need to change the background color, add a border, and of course change the text color so you can see it. And then do the exact opposite for the other tab because now it's active. We want to get rid of the border, change the background to blue, and the text to white. Okay, cool. So you can see that this is now kind of like a mirror of this other screen. Next, what we need to do is link everything together. So for the tabs, what we'll want is on this following tab, an action that links to the following tab. And for transition, we actually want to use none because if you're using tabs and this whole screen moves around, it no longer feels like tabs, it feels like multiple screens. So just use a none transition here and click done. And then on the other screen, we'll want to link back to followers the same way. So we'll want to link to profile with a none transition. Okay, cool. That's all set. Now there's one more thing. If you're using a screen with a back button and the action on the back button is set to back, what's gonna happen is as you go between these screens, the back is going to get a little messed up. So let me show you what I mean and then I will show you how to fix this. So we're in a, just the home page right now and we'll click on view profile and we see our default tab right now, which is listing followers. And we see our following tab, which lists the other users that we are following. So this works pretty well. We can click back and forth on the tabs and see the different data. And in the background, we're switching screens, but to me as a app user, I really don't notice anything here. So that's all great. But then when I wanna go back, let's say we wanna go back to the home page. See how I'm just going back through the tabs that I've been swapping between? That's not what we want to happen. So what you would like to do here is treat this back button like it's a link to a screen instead of just a link back. So in the app bar, if we go to left icon, we can see this link back is already set for us. Instead of going back, we can just set this to the home screen uh, and we can leave the transition as push. That's the, the original transition we had, or we can switch it up. I kind of like this slide right for going backwards. So I'll click done. And we want to do this for any screens that we have the tabs on. And this will keep anyone from getting stuck in like a loop of just going back all the way through the multiple times that they clicked on tabs. I think that's a better user experience too. So let's adjust this as well. Set the link back to the home and we'll slide right. 
And now you'll see that when we go into preview and we look at the profile and tap back and forth a few different times, as soon as we click back, we go back to home. So that's how you set up tabs in Adalo. Even though they don't exist, you can definitely accomplish this kind of functionality. You can do this for multiple tabs, of course. The more tabs that you have, the harder it's going to be to keep up with changes. Say I wanna update the style a little bit. You do have to make that update across all of the screens. Same with the links, really anything that's going to change. So it's a bit of a hassle the more tabs you have. I recommend only doing two or three or maybe four at a time. For anything else, you might wanna build out more of like a menu instead of doing this tab style navigation. But hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any questions or wanna chat, hit me up.